Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to services today. Welcome to Victory. For those of you online, my name is Tim Gertis. I'm the pastor here at Victory, and thank you for joining us. Please take a moment to check in. Say hi to your neighbor. Hi. Okay, and then uh, please rise from the beginning of worship. the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions to, to the Lord, and, and you, you forgave, forgave the iniquity, iniquity of, of my, my sin. sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am hardly sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy on us, has given His only Son to die for us, for His sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe on His name, He gives power to become the children of God and has promised them His Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, to us all. Amen. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, 
for he will speak peace to his people, to his saints, but let them not turn back to folly. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness meet, righteousness and peace kiss each other. Righteousness will go before him and make his footsteps away. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. with you and also with you let us pray Lord of all power and might author and giver of all good things graft into our hearts the love of your name and nourish us with your goodness that we may love and serve our neighbor through Jesus Christ your son our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God now and forever amen you may be seated. Our reading for today comes from Genesis chapter 2. This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created. When the Lord made, God made the earth and the heavens. Now, no shrub had yet appeared on the earth, and no plant had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not sent rain on the earth, and there was no one to work the ground. But well, streams came up from the earth and watered the whole surface of the ground. Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. Now the Lord had planted a garden in the east in Eden, and there he put the man he had formed. The Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground, trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. In the middle of the garden were the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. A river watering the garden flowed from Eden, from there it was separated into four headwaters. The name of the first is the Pishon. It winds, it winds the entire land of Havilah, where there is gold. The gold of that land is good. Aromatic, resin, and onyx were also there. The name of the second river is the Gihon. It winds the entire land of Cush. The name of the third river is the Tigris. It runs along the east side of Asher. And the fourth river is the Euphrates. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. And the Lord God commanded the man, You are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat from it, you will certainly die. The Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the wild animals and all the birds in the sky, he brought them to the man to see what he would name them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. So the man gave names to all the livestock, the birds in the sky, and all the wild animals. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man. And he brought her to the man. And the man said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she is taken out of man. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and he is united to her as his wife, and they become one flesh. Adam and his wife were both naked, and they felt no shame. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
as we start this new series today on relationships, and it's really poignant for today, and some of the stuff that's even happened uh, this week in our own communities and society, and I'm really excited because God made us to live in relationships. And we love to talk here, I know about, we talk about the one relationship that we have with God, but he also created every single person that we have on this planet and designed us to be in relationship with them. And that's what we see in, from Adam and Eve in the story of creation. And we're going to learn a lot from that today about how he's designed us to be and also how it's broken and how we can even come back to it. And I think about all the relationships that we have. You know, all the different ones where you have marriage, you have dating, you have being alone, children, parents, co-workers, siblings, friends, enemies. And next week, uh, Vicar Isaac Davis will be with us to talk about enemies on the 4th of July weekend. And as a service member, as a retired member of the Navy, Navy, how do you love your enemies when there's times of war and when there's times of verbal battles and physical violence, how do you do that? And how do you kind of navigate that? Uh, you have your coworkers. You have siblings today that you have a problem with. There are so many different things. So many relationships and ultimately your relationship with God. And there have been times in my life, and I'm sure there's times in your life, where your, your relationships have been sources of great strength where you can do anything and everything and you can accomplish wonders when you've got support and a team and people you're working with and that you love. But then there's those relationships, and we just named a whole bunch, where some are really good and then some are not so good, no matter what it is, and it's devastating. You barely want to get out of bed in the morning. You don't want to think about that person. You don't want to think about that relationship because of the heartache that it causes. And then while one relationship puts wind in your sails, the other one just sucks it all out. Life can be so good, but then it can be horribly wrong. So that's why we need to work on these things so that we can see the good and how God created these things. And Jesus reminds us very clearly in most of his teaching, we thought, well, what does God say about this? And what does God say about that? And Jesus teaches us that of all the things in life, the greatest things, the greatest thing, you think of all the things that we accomplish, that technologically and, uh, and money you've made, all those things, the, the greatest things in life are, are your relationships and to understand that we are created to be in them. Whether you're an introvert or an extrovert, it doesn't matter. You're created to be in relationship, whether it's a ton or just a few. Everybody needs at least that one good friend, that companion. And sometime when Jesus was asked one day, he, he was asked, what is the greatest command? And he didn't go through a whole long moral list of commands. He just said, we're going to go through two. And they're very similar. He said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul. Love God with everything you've got. Don't reserve anything. Everything you've got, love God. And then he says simply, so the second one is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. The key component in there is one word is what? Love. Yeah. Love God and understand there's only one God. And then love your neighbor that is everybody. As a kid, you know, you kind of get confused with that because you think it's your next door neighbor. As a friend of mine said, he said, one time he says, who's your closest neighbor? And it's my wife is my closest neighbor. My children are my closest neighbors. And it kind of builds out from there. But everybody is your neighbor from your family to your actual neighbors next to you who live next door to the person you run into the gas line today at Costco. Everybody is your neighbor. But love is the key component. And when you have that and you approach life with an attitude of love, it is such a good, 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 really good thing. It's the greatest thing. 
But because it's so good, it's also really hard. Because sometimes it's just hard to love. When you see somebody you don't agree with, somebody who has hurt you, somebody who, uh, anything, it's just really, really hard. We're experiencing that right now. It's not just in the nation this week. You know, somebody said, uh, with the Roe versus Wade thing, that somebody actually, you need to make a post. Like, thanks a lot. Oh, I'm not going to do that. Uh, I need to make a statement about it because it's all bucked up. This is a big, it's a big mess. And there's never just one thing over another. It's just a big mess. So how do we clear through those things? And that's what we're going to talk about today. It just fits. I wrote this on Monday before all this stuff happened. And it just really fits. And it's from this greatest story. One of the greatest stories that I believe that you need, everybody needs to hear, is the story of Adam and Eve. In fact, like the two stories in the Bible, to me, are about Adam and Eve, the key ones, and Jesus. If you got those, then you're fine. Because so much you can see in the picture of these two people that were created. In the moment in the garden where God said that the world hadn't even, a shrub hadn't even been formed. The land still needed to be watered. Stuff needed to grow. He says, I need somebody to tend to the creation. Or else to have a relationship with the creation. He created man to take care of things. Not to build and make our accomplishments, but it was about taking care of. Taking care of the land. Taking care of his wife. Taking care of what was created. As part of the creation. We have the creator and we have the created. But in this relationship then, he creates Eve. Because one thing he says, he's, God says, it's not good for the, the man to be alone. And that is so true. I probably would have set my house on fire several times if I didn't have my wife. It's not good for men to be left alone. Uh, universally. All right, it's not good for us to be left alone. But even that, besides that, in relationship, it's good to have friends. It's not just talking about husband and wife. It's about companionship. It's about... Um, just having someone who's like you. And I love it when God breathed into Adam's nostrils. He breathed his breath. You know, same words when we talk about the Holy Spirit, the Spirit that lives in us, that connects us to Jesus. It's the same Spirit, the Spirit that lives in us, Spirit that comes from God. And so we're reuni- we are united with God in that Spirit. And then, like a kindred Spirit, and then God created Eve with the same breath, the same Spirit. So you're one. I love the idea of being kindred spirits. You're just coming from that same place, your family. And you're connected. And it's a beautiful moment. You know, he made Adam name all the animals. I think maybe the purpose of Adam having to name through everything was to make sure that Adam understood that there was nobody else in all of creation that was like him. Nothing. Nothing. But the idea of dogs, man is, dog is man's best friend is a, it's false. It's a substitute. Dogs are great, but there's nothing like him. And then Eve was presented to him. And I have the picture of the first wedding. You have God the Father presenting the bride, beautiful and pure and lovely. And Adam just goes, wow. And there's an appreciation for her. I love this woman because, man, she is amazing. There's nothing else out there in the world like her, and she's like me. And he loved what was created for him, and he valued it, he appreciated it. And in that moment, it says they became one. But since they were naked together, And they felt no shame, no covering up, no turn the lights on. You know, it was just like, yeah, it was just like, it was just there. And you think about your relationships, what a beautiful thing it is to find a person or people 
where you can just be. You can just be. You know, so many of our issues that we have is just a lot of so much is communication because we don't understand each other. And here, there wasn't, they just understood each other. They just understood. There's no hiding anything. There's no, if they find out this or I did that. They just were. It's a beautiful thing. And then they tended the garden together. And they worked together. And you know, for all the things that we do, I think probably one of the deepest satisfactions you can have in life is just simply having your partner in crime. Well, actually, we don't want partner in crime. We don't want that. Partner in doing good things, doing what God wants you to do, doing it together, not worrying about the bank account, not worrying about this, not worrying about how you're going to eat, and like just simply being able to uh, eat three meals a day, you know, have your stomach fed, have a place to sleep, and have people to enjoy life with. And if we had that, if nothing ever got messed up, we'd probably be still in that garden today. Because you could just be. And you could just be. That's something we all crave. That is something we all crave, and I think resonates with everyone. Because that's how God created us to be. And then it got messed up. Then it got messed up. It all fell apart. You know the story. It says the serpent came. The serpent, and it says the serpent was the craftiest of all the things in creation. I mean, he knew I really spit a lie really knew how to spin something. Came to them, them, okay, came to them, found Eve, Adam, and found them and just crafted and said, start creating doubt. You know, did God really say you shouldn't eat from any tree? And they're like, no, no, we can eat of any of them, we just can't eat these. Ah, oh, you can't eat this one, yeah. All right, well, because if we eat of that, you know, God said we're going to die. <laughs> You're not going to die. And, and think about it, they had no idea what even death looked like. So they had no idea what it even looked like. It won't happen to you. It won't happen. Eh, I shouldn't do that. Ah, he's lying to you. Because you're smarter than that. If you eat of this, you're going to become like him. That's why he didn't want you to eat it. Really? And then they looked at it again, and then they, hmm. and then it says they saw it, it was good for eating, because it looked really good. I don't know if it was an apple or pomegranate, whatever it, whatever it was, it looked good. And you know what a good piece of watermelon looks like, you know, you know a piece of melon, honeydew, whatever it is, or an apple, you know what those good ones look like. And so they grabbed it, and it says saw it was useful for their own knowledge and their own benefit. And notice suddenly they stopped serving the creation. What they're called to do is helping take care of the creation and help listen to God. And all of a sudden they're separated from God because of doubt and lies. They stopped doing what they were called to do, what they were created for. Uh, Eve didn't really care about Adam. Adam didn't care about Eve. It was all about me what I think, what I feel, what I think is important, what I think is, and I'm going to be God. And then they ate. And it says that there, she gave some to him. He ate. We always blame Eve. But Adam's a jerk. Because he's like, it's like the parakeet in the coal mine, right? Where he's just like, let's see what happens to her. And she didn't die. Okay, I'll, I'll eat fine. And then it says their eyes were open, and then all of a sudden they couldn't look at each other anymore. That beautiful thing that we all crave is taken away because they were now blemished. They were just, bleh. And they, 
One had broken something, one had broken something. And they were hiding. And then they went out and they made the fig leaves. They had to cover themselves up. And that's silly, but do you think about how many ex flimsy excuses that we make in life for our behavior? And we try to, you know, cover things up, try to hide things really quick. We cover things up with a lie or something that anybody can see right through. Believe me, in the school office, we see this on a daily basis several times a day. Kids come in, what's happening? Da, 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 da. Just the excuses are so flimsy. They're not good liars yet. Some are pretty good, though. Uh, they're working on it. And then God calls them out. And he just simply asks a question. And I don't know how they received the question. You know, looking at paintings and pictures of other people's depictions of this event, uh, some people take the words of, like, what happened as like angry God coming out and going, what happened? What happened here? You blew it all. I don't take it that way. I take it more of the loving God because remember, before this, they were, they were together. They were walking with him in the garden. They walked with God. There's no wondering, what does God say about this or this or that? What's he thinking and feeling? They're walking with him in relationship with God and with each other. And now it's broken. And he just comes in and just says, what happened? Hey guys, what, what happened? How did we get here? How did we get here? Even though it was clear, you could see through the fig leaves, something happened. He knows what he knows. And then Adam did what we all do when a relationship is broken. He assigned blame. Eve did it too. Adam's classic though. And if you're reading social media and about people's reactions to everything, he did a classic where it's the woman's fault that you gave me. Right? It's the woman. Sorry, not you, Ed. Really. It's the woman's fault that you gave me. It's not me. She did it. You made her. Your fault or her fault. Not mine. And then he asked Eve, what happened? The serpent. The serpent deceived me. The serpent deceived me. They couldn't look at each other. They couldn't do any of that. They were assigning blame, which we do. We blame everybody for everything. It's either you or him. It's not me. Every relationship, I'm watching it play out right now in everything. We are blaming everybody else. God or you, not me. He asked that question, what happened? And then God did a couple of things. One thing he did was he held Adam and Eve accountable. We don't like that. And a lot of times in how we deal with our life in this world is that we like to take our excuses and we don't like to fess up to them. And then when we do get caught, we like things to be swept under the rug. We justify things. We make excuses for things. We all do it. There's not a single person who does not do that. We all do it. But God holds them accountable. He holds them accountable. They both made choices that had consequences. There's the word choice. We throw it around a lot right now. And God has always given us choices. Right there from the beginning. Eat from this tree 
or not. It's your choice. What we don't like is the consequences. We think we should just do whatever we want. And God said, no, there's clearly, there's, you can do what you want. You can either believe me or not believe me, but there are consequences to actions. There's always something that leads to something else. He said, you can either stay with me, trust me, and it will minimize the harm that happens to you in life, or you can do whatever. But there's always going to be consequences. He held them accountable, and unfortunately, we like to have them just sweep things under the rug, and uh, why did he have to kick them out of the garden? Why did he have to do that? Because he held them accountable. Because if you say, as a parent, if you threaten your, if you tell your kid, hey, if you do this and you don't do this, and you don't hold them accountable, you don't enforce the punishment, they're going to kind of keep doing that because they know you're not going to do anything. And then he becomes a sop, the sad sack, whatever. You can't have a God like that. <clears throat> he holds them accountable. But what's so really neat, though, what's so cool about it, though, is that, yeah, he kicked them out of the garden, but you know what he didn't leave? What he didn't take away from them? He didn't take away each other. He didn't leave them, and they didn't leave each other because relationships are important. It's just going to be really hard now. So the ground's going to be hard for you. Uh, it's not going to be an easy way to live life. But here are the consequences. But also, there's also a path to forgiveness. How you forgive each other, how I forgive you, and ultimately we know that's in Jesus. Because with forgiveness, forgiveness and grace and mercy, where we start there, that's where relationships can be restored. But like anything else, anything else, it's going to be hard. The second thing he did, this is very important, he properly assigned blame. He properly assigned blame. Like I said, we tend to blame anyone and anything just so we can escape. When you ask the question, what happened to two kids, to what happened in a court of law, to what happened in any scenario, you're going to get multiple answers. Everybody has a viewpoint about what happened. Then everybody starts the blaming. And God appropriately and properly assigned blame. But we tend to blame anyone and everything. God blamed who? The devil. He blamed the serpent. Because liars... And I've known some. Liars are really good at manipulating people. Liars are so good at it. And we feel bad when we feel like we believed a lie, but man, they are good. And the devil is the chief one, the father of all lies. Liars can manipulate situations to get what they want to get you to do something, to make you think that something bad is a source of hope and good. If you do this, you will have this. And the whole time, there's another something, another shoe is going to drop. And we are living in a world today where we have believed lies and we are dealing with not just one mess, but tons of messes because we believe the lies. So sometimes we just have to ask the question, and not just some one situation, in all situations, what are the lies that we are believing that are not the truth? And where do we find truth? Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. God's word is truth. But God appropriately assigned the blame he assigned it to Satan. And while we may get fooled, God does not. And we get amped up into the arguments and we say this person, that person, this person, that person, and it's like, no. It's the devil who does it. 
You know, Proverbs 16, Solomon observed this. He says, a perverse man spreads dissension and a gossip divides close friends. And then Jesus would later say, you, and he's talking to the, the Pharisees, he say, you belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He, the devil, was a murderer from the, what? Beginning. He wanted them dead. But like any liar, he tried to manipulate it and then slide out of the way. I didn't do it. I didn't eat the fruit. I merely suggested. I pondered a question. They did it. He says, you, he was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. And when he lies, he speaks his native language, meaning it flows out easy and it is believable. For he is a liar and the father of lies. The devil is so good. So good. You think about how many of you, I know I have, have ever believed a lie about yourself, about someone, maybe a course of action that should be taken, that you were so positive that it was true, but it was wrong. Ever happened to anybody? It happens all the time. To find out that you are dead wrong. You know, Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 6, he says this. He says, put on the full armor of God so that you can make your stand against the devil's schemes. Devil's what? Schemes. schemes. Lies. Behind the scenes. Schemes. Manipulation. Put on the full armor of God. For our struggle is not against who? It's not against flesh and blood, but against who? the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this world's darkness, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Our struggle is not against flesh and blood. You know, last week, if you went back and I, I watched the testimonies that were given last week, and if you didn't get a chance to do that yet, I encourage you to do that. Uh, Jay, I love Jay talking about his father in India and who never fought anybody. Building the church, people were threatening him. They were th horrible things were happening, but he never fought anybody. And Jay would go, you're we such a loser. I thought his dad was a loser because he wasn't fighting. His dad understood his battle was not against flesh and blood. I don't need to fight anybody. I don't need to fight anybody. God's in charge. He's with me. He'll take care of things. And God did those things. He was a man of peace because of who he understood God to be as the one in charge, as a man of peace of understanding that God is the creator. We are the created. And that's the truth. So if you ever think to yourself how smart you are, remember, you're not the creator. You're not that smart. There's always one smarter than you. His ways are higher than our ways. But the devil is so good. So when we take this journey together now, looking through relationships and looking through all the ones, especially all the ones that you have, because some of you have relationships that are really good and then there's really bad. I don't know any reporter who's got all great relationships. There's always something. Take down these basic things, basic principles, and you apply them, you, know, you will see, I think, a change in your life in those relationships. The three things that God did. Three things that we see. Hold yourself accountable before you hold someone else accountable. Find out what the truth is. Not what you think the truth is, not what the news person tells you the truth is. Nah, nah. Find out what the truth is. We're talking about the truth that is in God's word. And then let it play out from there. Two, seek and ask 
and receive forgiveness. It's important to seek it, but it's also important to receive it because sometimes we just beat ourselves up when we've been forgiven already. So you don't need to do that anymore. So seek and receive forgiveness. And then assign blame properly. It's who? Satan. Satan. Every time the root is going to be Satan who causes dissension, who causes things to split up and gossip, and now he gets us to behave in such a way, and then like, no, we were deceived. Get to the truth, assign blame, and united with your family. You know, one of my um, sisters, uh, a few years ago I was speaking to her, and she's my half-sister. And I say half-sister because, just to give you that little clue that you know it's going to be messy. Because there means there's a relationship problem in there somewhere. Uh, my dad, you know, had been uh, married young, and we like to assign blame to things, but he married young, divorced, had two kids in the process, and so I have a half sister that I don't see very often because we didn't grow up together. In fact, I did. I was eight years old before I knew, uh, before I ever met her before, uh, just from the family dynamics of things of a broken relationships, and it was incredibly broken. And uh, over the years, we've gotten together now and then. And of all my sisters, I've got four of them, and uh, she's the one probably that is closest to me in terms of how we are, our being. And we're still not very close, but when we get together, it's just amazing. And one time we got together, and it was the first time she was able to meet Amron. She, we had been married already, uh, not invited to the wife, all these, all these little things, right? And so she finally got to meet my wife, and we just had a great time, and then she shared a moment where... Uh, she is having a struggle with a relationship, relationship with her older sister, my other half sister, whom I've never met. Who has expressed no desire to meet me, and so I'm like, okay, that's fine. Uh, doesn't want to meet me, but I was talking to her, and they were having a hard time. Siblings, they were just having a really, really hard time. And uh, my sister Lori, a good Christian lady, was uh, reading the Bible one day and felt God tell her, how to capture your thoughts. How to take your thoughts, what's running around your head, and put them to God's service. Take capture. Now, how in the world do you do that? And then she immediately, went, okay, how are we going to capture a thought? She imagined a little box that she would put the thought in and just kind of pull it out like a Harry Potter movie, just pull it up and put it in her, uh, this little box, and look at it and examine it. And it, the, the thing that was in there was a person she really hated. It's a politician. She really hated this guy. And then she felt God say to him, like, well, I love him. Well, how can you love him? Because uh, I died for him. Message received. Right? So she put that message, I got it. More grace and mercy, understanding. I'll put that away. And then God said to her, I'm not done with you yet. <sighs> what about your sister? No. No, because now it gets his close to home. It's personal. Pulled my other sister out in there, put it in there. I love her too. Yeah, but she never returns call. We try to set up, she cancels, she doesn't want, uh, she's hurt me. Uh, he said, I love her too. She's your sister. And you got to let go of the bitterness. You gotta let go of the bitterness. So she's able to forgive her, seek forgiveness, and I really don't know how that's all panned out. I wish I could say they've hold hands now and they go do all vacations together. That's not the case. But the bitterness left her. Because she was able to love her sister again and the bitterness was gone. Because she was able to assign properly the blame. Not her sister, to the devil. And she gets to love. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for being in this moment. Lord, we pray that you would, in this course of this series, whether it be 
the things that are going on in our world around us, Lord, that we pray that you would soften our hearts and remove any bitterness so that we can have peace and be able to show genuine love. Where truth needs to be revealed, reveal it. Where we need to be accountable for ourselves, let us be accountable. And let us understand that you are truth. And that the road going forward, as we said earlier today, Lord, we said our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. You are our hope. Your opinion is the one that matters. Let us move with grace and truth and to love you above all things. In your love for us, teach us to love one another. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So at this time, please rise. We're going to confess our faith about the one who is in charge, our Creator. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. All right, you may be seated. Uh, for our announcements today, there's a, couple, a few things to remember. Uh, one is that following the service today, we, we have two things happening this afternoon. One, following our uh, 1045 service, we're having our annual voters meeting, where we're going to get a chance to talk about what's happened in our ministry this year. God has been fantastic, and uh, God has worked through us, and it's been really something to be able to take a, a good bird's eye view to see it. And we're also going to be voting our budget and think what God is going to be doing for us the coming year, and uh, it's going to be a really good time together just to be able to, to look at those things and encourage you to come to that. And then at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, out at Coronado, uh, Sarah Seelan's uh, already there this morning at the crack of dawn to reserve a fire pit uh, out in Coronado, and so we're going to have our beach kind of a bash out there, Coronado Beach Bash, starting at 4 o'clock, potluck, um, and we'll have a great time with that this afternoon. And then also a reminder, is this also part of our service where we do our giving and our tithing? Uh, it's a reminder that we give in four different ways, but there's not just four different ways to give. You can give, this is how you can, four different ways you can give monetarily. Monetarily. You can give through our online, you can text the number, you can send it in mail, and in person here today we have our envelopes so you can track your giving for tax purposes, and you can put that in the uh, box located out uh, right behind the door here. Uh, but it's also different ways to give is you give yourself. Your time, your talent, those kinds of things. There's always different ways uh, to give. So I encourage you to think and pray about those things. Um, also coming up right around the corner, we have this coming up. And then today also we're having a fundraiser for the last fundraiser for the National Youth Gathering because that's coming up really quick. And to talk about Lisa Dufresne, it's going to come here and also give you an update on BBS. Hello. Hi. Good morning. Um, first, I want to tell you about our final fundraiser for the National Youth Gathering because we head out of here in about two weeks. Less than two weeks. Less than two Less weeks. Less than two weeks. We head out of here uh, with 30 high schoolers, eight adults, um, and we're heading to Houston where it's supposed to be 98 degrees. <laughs> I'm sure if, it's lovely. If we're lucky. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, but we're doing our last fundraiser today. Um, when you leave today on the wall in between the two offices, 
There are 100 envelopes hanging on the wall. Each one of them has a number on it from 1 to 100. Um, all you have to do is grab one of those envelopes and whatever number's on the front, you put that much money on the inside of it and put it into the offering uh, box that's right there on the wall or you can just hand it to me, that's fine too. Um, you, if you'd like to put more than what's in that envelope, you, you certainly may. Um, if you would like to take more than one envelope, you may certainly do that as well. Um, but this is our just our last chance to um, help these kids get to Houston, um, which they are very, very excited about. It's gonna be a lot of fun, a great experience, um, something they're gonna remember for a lifetime. Uh, the second thing I want to talk to you about is Vacation Bible School, which is coming up July 25th through the 29th. Um, so that's the end of next month. So it's about a month away from now, um, just about a month. And um, we will next week have some items that you can um, donate if you would like to. Um, we will also have the registration up online. So if you know somebody who would like to attend Vacation Bible School, the registration will be online. Um, if you would like to help with Vacation Bible School or you know somebody that would, um, just contact me and I can let you know what they can do and the days that they can come and help. Um, anywhere from registration to helping with decorating um, to teaching classes, being crew leaders, whatever that might be. Um, if you would like to be involved, just let me know. Thank you. Okay, and then lastly, uh, mentality is uh, We've gone kind of on a, like a, a summer schedule, and so we're going to have uh, dinner this week, simple dinner, sorry, at 6.30. Just kind of re-engage, so if you have been before, if you've never been, come on out this Tuesday uh, for mentality, and mentality is for the men of the congregation, if you're confused about that. So uh, please stand now as we receive our offerings. As we join now in prayer, it's just a reminder that for those of you online, for those of you in person, if you have a prayer request today, uh, we do have people that would love to pray for you here in the room. But if you'd like to submit a prayer to our prayer chain, you can simply send an email to prayers at victorysouthbay.org. And then we also have a prayer quilt out in the hallway today for uh, a member of our church, Danny Lopez. You may or may not know him, who recently um, suffered a stroke and is now unresponsive in care. So we're going to be praying for him today as well. So please make sure you tie a knot on the prayer quilt in the hallway. Let's join our hearts in prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank and praise you for being with us today in this moment. We thank you for sending your son Jesus who died for all the sin of the world. During his holy week, that last week, we saw how ugly humanity can be. We're experiencing it now. How we feed on each other, we eat each other, we are on top of each other. We do not take care of one another the way we ought. We do not love you the way we ought. And he died for every single last bit of it. All of it. The sin, my sin, and the sin of our neighbors. He died for it all. So inspire us, Lord, to love the way you have loved us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray today for all of those who are in places of persecution where they have not just stood up for their faith, but Lord, I pray for those who, have, who are spreading their faith to places that are dark, where the 
threat of persecution is very real. Lord, I pray that you would give them not just strength, but a vision of your son Jesus. Just like you gave to Stephen, one of just beauty that allowed him to forgive others as they attacked him and allowed his light to continue to shine. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for our ministry. We pray for our voters being. We pray for all of our gatherings, Lord, that your light would truly be shown. We thank you for what you are doing here. We thank you for what you have done here. Lord, we thank you for what you're going to be doing here tomorrow. Lord, we thank you for all who will see and hear. Lord, we thank you for a place like our resource center. We thank you for our school. We thank you for our church. We thank you for all the places that we go that your light may shine. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. And Lord, there are other people, Lord, who are struggling with just the variety of things of life, who are sick, who are struggling with decisions right now, who are just not sure what to do or where to go. Lord, we pray for them and pray that your peace would be on them. We pray for Danny this morning that you would uh, bring perfect healing to his heart, mind, and soul, however you see fit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. And all other things, Lord, we know that you hear us as we pray. Our Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed hallowed be thy thy name. name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, come. thy Thy will be done, done, on earth earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our our daily bread, bread, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses, as we forgive forgive those who trespass trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, temptation, but deliver deliver us from from evil. evil. For thine is the kingdom, kingdom, and the power, and the glory, glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you today his peace. Amen. 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 Amen.